improv art takes center stage with silk painter Lee Zimmerman and cellist Kathy McTavish. We'll share an insider's approach to this week's gallery hop in Duluth and preview one of the Duluth Superior Symphony Orchestra's featured guests, Frank Almond. That's what's on the playlist this week. Funding for the playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Well, tonight we salute a 20-year tradition in Duluth's art scene, the annual Earth Day Gallery Hop. It certainly showcases the wealth of talent in our community. And joining us tonight to talk about what to expect this year is a pair of gallery owners. Jeff Schmidt is the owner of Lizard's Gallery, and Bev Johnson is from the Art Doc. Thank you guys for coming in. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you're you welcome. for having us. 20 years of a gallery hop in Duluth. That's a pretty impressive uh, tradition. It is. It is. And... Um, it, you know, it's just it's such an enjoyable one for gallery owners to um, to host as well. It's it's a really fun event for families. It's got to be a ton of work though to get ready for, yeah. It is, but it's it's just like a spring cleaning. It's bringing in new artwork. It's it's um, it's so interesting for us as well. Now, Bev, you might have been around when they first started this great idea of the gallery hop. Was it hard to get people together to to okay? all the galleries together to support this, or how did it get started? Well, it was the 20th anniversary of Earth Day, and uh, my partner Eileen Carjuara and I were talking about how can we celebrate the arts and the community and Earth Day all in one, and let's have an art fair or an art gallery or an art hop or a stroll of some kind. And so that's how it started, um, with six participating venues and environmental themes and a portone trolley for mass transit. And so the, that was the beginning of the Art for Earth Day gallery hop. And we always um, try to keep the gallery hop around Earth Day. And this year it's Earth Day is April 22nd. It's the 40th anniversary of Earth Day. That's, uh, what an accomplishment. I mean, really, first of all, that Earth Day has been around for 40 years and that the gallery hop that, ha that has sustained it and continued uh, with the same purpose, with the, with the idea of introducing new artists to the community or with that environmental purpose still front and center? How do you um, see it? For many of the galleries, yes, it's still it's been a recurring theme every year. Um, you know, there's many new venues, though, that you, all, uh, um, each of the hosting galleries is um, open to whatever kind of um, exhibit they want to put on. Yeah, quite a variety. Oh, huge variety. And it, and it involves um, performing arts as well now, um, musicians performing at each of the venues. And that's just fun. Now, I have to tease you a little bit because you have kind of a recycled theme. Uh, Catherine Kempshen has her pieces at Lizards this yes, week. Yes, yes. Uh, she's been collecting men's silk ties for years and has been developing this body of work and it was just kind of um, a perfect time to premiere that, that exhibit. That's very fun. And at the Art Doc, what's happening? At the Art Doc is our group show. It's called In Honor of the Earth. It's the 17th annual. And we have tw representing 25 different artists with two-dimensional and three-dimensional work. And some um, recycled products are involved in not everything, but in a lot of them. Um, the landscapes represent the Northland and how beautiful a place it is that we live. I have to ask, are any of your own, your personal pieces on the wall there? They are not. <laughs> I think we need to change that, Beth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody else has asked that, too. <laughs> I think we could put some of your work on there. So if you stepped into one of the galleries in Duluth this week, you probably saw a lot of activity. Galleries are making room for special guest artists and demonstrations and generally preparing for the kickoff of the season. Here's a little taste of the action. My name is Laura Goey and you're at the Blue Lake Gallery. We are getting ready to start our gallery hop for the year, the 20th year of the gallery hop and we've been involved for 10 years. We have many new artists this year and um, I'll show you a few. Um, 
new to us this year um, is Linda Yates, who does colorful mosaic um, mirrors, tiles. Behind you here, Karen, is Chuck Gronowski, who is a fabulous glass blower. Chuck is retired from the nuclear power plant, Prairie Island Nuclear Power Plant, and now he's following his passion uh, doing his blown glass, and you'll find him in Red Wing. John and Sally Carlson, they've been with us for a number of years. They're pretty well known as the specialists on taking the Northern Light photos. Fabulous people, very nice people. Mm -hmm. Also new to Blue Lake this year is um, Bob and Cheryl Husby, which a lot of people are familiar with. Bob and Cheryl, um, of course, do some of the salt shakers that people collect, as well as pottery bowls, vases, mugs, um, lots of wonderful pottery from Bob and Cheryl. Jan Wise is a new artist for us who does uh, the bear, polar bear prints. Anthony Hunder. I don't know how someone can make pottery feel so soft. I think it's the glaze. I'm working in the corner, and oftentimes in the gallery when you move one thing, you end up moving five things, and that's what's happening today. Where I'm working right now with some of Karen Mackey's work. I met her in a coffee shop after admiring her work for a long time, and combined with that, I'll hang some of Linda Yates's mosaics, um, just to bring out some bright colors. Uh, this is our canvas. We hang our artwork, you know, accordingly. The quality of artists in this area is just uh, phenomenal to me. It, you know, I come into work every day and it's not even really work. It's, it's a gift. So that looks like a fun job. And you understand when you move one thing, you move five. Exactly. That's very cool. So tell me more about the gallery hop as far as what's new this year. Well, there's um, three new venues this year. Um, Gaia Art Gallery is a new gallery in Canal Park, and their focus is on recycled artwork, rec artwork made from recycled materials. Mm -hmm. um, the second would be Zeitgeist Arts. Um, they are featuring um, covers from OOV magazine. And the third is Art in the Alley in Superior. Um, and this is the second year now that Superior, um, a gallery in Superior has participated. Which is, I think, great. You know, that bridge is, is a bridge, it's not a barrier. Yeah. Which is pretty neat. Um, other galleries that are part of it, you were just talking about the emerging artists at the Duluth Art Institute. Right, and the uh, Tweed Museum of Art has the student show um, and has been active in the gallery hop since day one. Um, another uh, gallery is Severson's Gallery. And, and they have um, Rick Allen's pieces. Rick Allen's, he's yes. awesome. Yeah. Um, Washington Studio Artists Cooperative, <laughs> that's a big word, big name, um, is actually having a mini uh, art festival in the hallways and their gallery is showcasing uh, some of the artists that live in that building. Yeah. That, it's just so much going on and thank you for your work in organizing all this, Bev. You're welcome. I, I, I've been hearing that, that it kind of happens by, by your magic. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, yep, the trolleys are going to run. Thank you, Bev. Yes, <laughs> the, you know, <laughs> the word's getting out. So thank you. Um, yep. You guys have given me an, a little bit of a window into your world of, of curating galleries and, and this year, uh, starting this new show, uh, Jeff has got us started on a good foot curating uh, the playlist gallery. So take a look at some of the work behind us here. Um, you brought in just a beautiful piece from Adu Gindi is the, is the, the painting. It is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. She is um, just really well known in this area. She taught at UMD. Um, so anyone who's gone to UMD and taken an art class has probably taken one from her. Um, and she has such a distinct style, it's very recognizable. Yeah, and just fun. Yeah. You know, there's, there's just, mm. there's some humor and there's some playfulness. Uh, the glass pieces come from Robinson Scott. Tell yes. me about him. Um, he's an artist from Anoka, Minnesota, and he's been exhibiting in Duluth for roughly 18 years. Um, just very, very well done. He has a great education from um, Sweden and in Seattle. Lots of color. 
Mm -hmm. you know, and, and you know that I'm afraid of, you know, I, I not being a glass person, am afraid. And the next piece is from Jess Durfee. Yes. And, and I saw that beautiful, delicate beak on that bird and went, oh, I don't want to go within 10 feet of that, you know? <laughs> How do you deal with that in a gallery setting? Well, things break every once in a while. Luckily, many of the artists are understanding, but um, yeah, you have to be careful as mm -hmm. well. But Jess is very talented and also has it's traveled very the world. Very easygoing and yeah, he's a great guy to talk to. Yeah, fantastic. I'm so looking forward to the gallery hop because it gives us all kind of a, not that we need another excuse to go out and just look at stuff, but hopefully look and maybe do some shopping at the same time. Exactly. Yeah, get us going on that. Okay, and once again, the gallery hop is this Saturday in Duluth and Superior. Uh, the gallery and trolley hours are 11 o'clock to 5 o'clock. So um, we'll have a great time this weekend. And thank you guys for coming tonight to talk about it. Well, thanks for having us. All right, we'll be right back after this message. Hi, my name is Tim Young. I'm a Grand Marais painter and I've got my paintings here at Coho Cafe in Tofty right now. I like to paint anything that pops into my head. This here is uh, a bass on a plate, and you see I've garnished it with uh, mountain ash berries and mountain ash leaves, just uh, kind of a local garnish, just uh, meant to be sort of whimsical. The pine trees, a lot of times I think of them as individuals, like people almost. Uh, you'll see three corgis here in an airplane. Uh, it's called Corgis Over Grand Marais. I think as I go through my life, I pick up bits and pieces of from anywhere and everywhere, and they sort of subconsciously get incorporated into my images. Our musical guest tonight is actually in town tuning up for this weekend's concert with the Duluth Superior Symphony Orchestra. Please welcome violinist Frank Almond. Thank you. 
honored. Thank you, <laughs> truly. Thank you. thank you so much for coming thank over. You. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's just awesome to have you here. Thank you. Now we're borrowing borrowing you from the Milwaukee Symphony. Yeah. Yeah. Just for the weekend. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> You're not going to uh, stay? No, I'll, no. I have to be back at work on Tuesday. So. Yeah. Excellent. And so tell us about the piece you were just playing. That's a piece by uh, Johann Sebastian Bach, um, who wrote a lot of great, uh, among other things, a lot of great pieces for solo violin about 300 years ago, and uh, they're still being played. The, that particular piece is probably very well known uh, through its transcriptions for other instruments. It's played on keyboard a lot, it's played on other instruments, but it still sounds best on the violin. <laughs> yeah, well, not, not that you're a little bit biased in any way. No, not at all. Uh, no. You mentioned uh, a round number of about 300 years. Um, the instrument that you're holding, tell me, uh, it, it's yeah, almost 300 is, years right, old. Right, well this actually is a, con a contemporary of Bach's as well. Bach died in 1750, and this instrument was made by Antonio Stradivari, actually, in 1715. So it's doubtful Bach ever saw it, but um, there it is, yeah. yeah. But fantastic. I mean, and, and you said it's a long story, but it's got quite a pedigree. About this instrument. Yes. Yeah, they're amazing uh, things in that they're these incredible antiques and artifacts, but they're also still uh, functional on a very high level. You know, they really are the best violins in the world and probably the best stringed instruments from uh, the best person who ever made them. So it's amazing that, you know, 300 some years later, they're, they're still at the peak of their game. So. How does one come to acquire <laughs> a, a, a uh, an instrument well, like that? <laughs> a lot of money it really helps, but uh, in my case, um, y you have either benefactors or people that have them and they want them played and they loan them out and things like that. Um, not to give too much detail, but that's usually how we acquire them now. So just fantastic. Yeah, so you're wonderful in, tools to have. Yeah, I mean, it, it, does it make a difference in, in in your musical journey that has taken you to Rotterdam and London and Japan? And we were talking 17 years old in Italy. You know, <laughs> I mean, what a what a it's wonderful just a few tool. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, it's it's like somebody giving you a, 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 it's like you're used to working with maybe four or five different colors in your paintbrush and uh, somebody gives you 100 colors to work with. It's really that, the same kind of thing. And then you have to sort of learn how to use it. I'm perfectly capable of not sounding so great on a great instrument. So it's really, contrary to what a lot of people think, it's a, it's really more about the player, I think, than, than the instrument itself. It's nice, but you can wreck a Ferrari very, very easily. <laughs> I, I probably could. You don't want to know about my driving record. Okay. Um, so tell me a little bit about um, what we can expect this weekend. Yeah, we're Vivaldi. playing um, actually some pieces by Vivaldi, uh, who was a contemporary of Bach's, um, probably a lot more famous than Bach in his time, but they actually lived almost at exactly the same time. Uh, Vivaldi was in Venice, Bach was in Germany, and Vivaldi was a virtuoso violinist and uh, opera impresario and did a lot of different things as well as uh, he was a priest as well. Um, he was quite a character and, and wrote a lot of uh, sort of, um, I don't know, really virtuosic but, but very important pieces for a lot of different solo instruments. He wrote probably about 300 different concerti, maybe 500 actually if you count a few other things um, in his lifetime and one of the most famous ones is the one we're playing this weekend. It's called The Four Seasons which is one of those classical pieces of music that uh, probably everybody knows if they heard it, but they're, they, they usually hear it in shopping malls and elevators and in movies and things like that. It but will sound completely different <laughs> yeah. in your hands. Well, it's a piece for violin and, and the orchestra from that time, which was basically strings and keyboard. And uh, it's four separate violin concerti, three movements each. So it's, it's 12 different parts and it's a very vivid, exciting and very interesting kind of crazy uh, musical depiction of the seasons of the year. So there's one for each season, and I hope people will come and see it. I think if you haven't seen it live and are used to hearing it in a shopping mall, it's a very different thing. Yeah, <laughs> definitely worth yeah. a go see. And yeah. thank you for coming in and uh, being part of our Duluth thank Superior you. Symphony great, Orchestra. Great. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, thank it's you. our pleasure. Thanks. Now we'll get to hear more from Frank's awesome violin before the show is over, but we'll be right back right after this short break. Moliere's classic comedy, The Misanthrope, will take the stage at the College of St. Scholastica Theatre. Directed by Liz Larson, this rollicking 17th century comedy of manners satirizes the hypocrisies of aristocratic society. Don't miss The Misanthrope, 
now playing at the College of Saint Scholastica. Well, if you were lucky, you got to see Lee Zimmerman create some amazing backdrops for the recent Playhouse production of The Secret Garden. Lee paints with vibrant dyes on silk panels. He's among a very small group of artists worldwide who've mastered the technique. Lee pushes the boundaries with creative collaborations fueled by the energy of a live performance. Take a look. Every once in a while, it's nice to be able to see what you can do um, if you allow yourself to do it. And that's what's really kind of energizing me. So I should be scared, but I'm not. <laughs> I have a little bit of a plan, um, and this one is really special because um, I haven't told, well, I've told very little to uh, the musician, to Kathy, and she's going to try and react to what I'm painting. Actually, sometimes those surprises work best because you're, you're really engaged, you're really watching, you're really focused, and you're really in the moment. And you have to be very present, you know, there's no dialing it in. Kathy, she can improvise and if I need more time, she can extend it. If I need less time, she can, uh, you know, shorten things and she can respond to what I'm doing. What I do is I'll generally start out with a black, maybe sketch in a little bit of what's there. And the reason that I do that is that when I come in later with the color dye, I notice that the dyes when it, it will, the color will take off with the dye, it will actually carry the black dye to the edge and form very sharp lines. So what I'm really doing is it's kind of like a controlled spill. So what I can do is I can set up this um, sheet of silk and I can be on one side and the audience is on the other side and when I paint, they don't see me, you just see the dyes coming through the fiber, like a, a kind of like a stained glass window effect. You can get some of the most intense colors out of the dyes, um, and they're also variable enough so that you can actually go back to the muted grays or even pale colors um, by the way you, you handle the dyes. So the dynamic range is incredible on the dyes. I get so much joy. I, I don't know if all painters get this, but they get joy out of doing the painting, out of physically doing it. And there's something about letting other people see the magic that's, uh, that's really exciting. So that somehow that feeds me. <laughs> I think I am really attracted to paintings that try to tell a story. And sometimes the story is not the one that I'm telling, but it's one the viewer brings to them, brings to the, the, the pieces. Part of me is going to come out no matter what. <laughs> I, can't, I can't draw differently than myself, and I, I, I can't view the world sort of differently. So a piece of me is going to come out, and if I'm honest to that, that piece, um, then I think it will be uh, a good painting. Some of Lee's work is on display at Lizard's Art Gallery in Duluth this weekend, so if you're out for the hop, you can see the results of a master silk painter at work. Now, a couple of other art notes this week. The annual Empty Bowl event features the work of professional and amateur potters. That's Tuesday at the Depot here in Duluth, 10 o'clock in the morning till 6.30. The Battle of the Bands featuring area high school musicians is coming Sunday afternoon at the deck. And theater lovers can take in Little Shop of Horrors at the William Kelly High School in Silver Bay. Paul Diener and the Lake Superior Community Theater Group are staging the play Friday and Saturday night. We'll leave you with another taste of the musicianship of Frank Almond. He'll be at the deck this weekend performing with the Duluth Superior Symphony Orchestra. So put some good stuff on your playlist this weekend and go out and support an artist.
Funding for The Playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and by viewers like you.